Okay, so today I'm looking at lithium and I've cherry picked a few companies, whether or not they'll, they'll do good or not. Most of them are penny stocks and this is the first thing I'm gonna say, a massive disclaimer here. This isn't investment advice because penny stocks are risky things. Uh, I'm sure plenty of people who have followed me for a long time have seen, you know, kernel minerals go from 0.02 of a pence to like 0.4 pence, which I get is a great return, but that doesn't come with its risks. But I've had a look at some lithium companies. I've cherry picked some of them along with an ETF, which has a good bunch of most of them. For anyone that potentially might not want to take that risk of cherry picking a, a penny stock, for instance. Um, but that is what we're going to be looking at today. It is the 25th of August. My name is Tyrone and you're watching Mini. Jumping straight into the video, the first thing that I want to look at is the Lithium ETF. Uh, it's run by Global X, which is an asset manager based in America, probably on Wall Street. And essentially they, what they do is, is they put together ETFs similar to like what Kathy Wood would do from ARK Invest. So she has like ARK Innovation and so on and so on. This is just a lithium version of it, which is run by Global X. Now, the lithium ETF is for anyone who's watching this who potentially doesn't trade uh, isn't willing to take the risks on penny stocks but wants a balanced portfolio the ETF gives you the best option it's $85 a share and you essentially have uh, a nice basket of um, sort of lithium companies and we can look at the breakdown by country so China has a 50.9% essentially valuation on, 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 the, um, on the ETF we can look at it from sectors so as well but when we actually look at the holdings, there's two at the top which really matter, and that's uh, Abel Mao and Gang Feng. Now, what's interesting is even as we go on to this video and we look into this video, um, Gang Feng owns quite a lot of lithium, smaller lithium penny stocks, and it's the same with um, Abel Mao as well. So the, the real question being is that if you don't want to take the risks on the um the penny stocks you may as well just buy one of these two because they will have somewhere or another they will have operations within the penny stock so for instance one of them that i'm looking at is called bacchanora which we'll look at very shortly it's probably my favorite uh, it's the one that i've done the most research into and bacchanora has um ties with gang feng um which if we look on here gang feng has a seven percent influence or just short of on this fund you know, combined uh, Albemarle and Gangfeng, they're uh, a 20% influence or 21% influence on this fund. Um, so in terms of stability, for anyone building a portfolio, the global lithium ETF is the best. If we actually look at the chart and just do a bit of quick technicals on it, um, we can see this is just going up and I don't really see a reason for it to go down. You've got high demand for cars and I'm sure out there, there's plenty of other videos out there that will tell you about the demand for cars. I ain't gonna tell you, can't be bothered. Um, I know that the demand is high for cars, so you know I know that the lithium demand is going to be high as well. So we've got plenty of support on here. If you was buying up at eighty five, that's not a problem. Uh, but you know, up until seventy, until probably this trend line breaks here, would I actually even be concerned or bothered about where this price is going as such in the short term? What I would like to see probably won't happen is a pullback from here and then essentially a nice long from here potentially up to 120 maybe by the end of the year or maybe by quarter one quarter two of next year and that's a good return for someone who's invested in a, a mixed portfolio or someone that doesn't want much risk if you can you know return 39 percent in say um or even in, in a year, if you can return 39% a year, that's gonna beat the S&P 500. It's probably gonna beat the NASDAQ as well. And so that's what you've gotta look at, is trying to beat the markets. And lithium is probably one of those industries which could do that. Um, so for the purpose of diversification and having a balanced portfolio, the lithium ETF is probably the best option. To the downside, 
your floor probably sits at 73 to $70. And unless we break this, would I be concerned? I would be a buyer now. I would continue. Moving on to some single shares. The first thing, or the first one that I want to look at is Kodo. It's 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 the it is the mini pip signature share that I've probably tracked for a long time, and we can see that right now we've you could argue that we've got this you know ascending support in preparation for the next move potentially towards that 0.5 of a pence move. But again, if I'm buying in, you know to um, to, to curdle you know you want to be buying in here and then continuing to buying if it falls and if it goes up it basically means that you're not going to miss out because you know a move from 33 to 50 is a good 60 70 percent increase and that you know those gains you're probably not going to get in companies like apple disney you need mega cap big cap companies unless you're trying to trade them um, and obviously trading brings risk but again so does penny stocks and again if you are trading this is, is not investment advice at all please don't say this is investment advice but looking at Codal at the moment it is looking like it is gearing up for that next leg higher towards 50 and then 60p potentially in the next six to nine months it is a rapid move and we've seen that in the past you know we see these big spikes uh, and, and you know every time we get this this big spike we get this sort of downward um, I don't know this, this cool down followed by this massive spike and I think that we are gearing up. Now let's say we do break that and, 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 and we continue lower. That's not a bad thing. And if you're buying in at 35p, I wouldn't be bothered uh, even if it goes down 50%, 30%, 40%. Because you know, if you bought in here um, back in April of this year or, or whatever, if you bought in at 20p, we go down to almost um, 11p, which is a 40% decline to then go up to 35p it's a matter of holding and, and having the balls to hold which makes a, a good investor when it comes to penny stocks in my opinion you know having the balls to be able to swing on those you know rapid moves but looking right now it does look like we are going to continue higher but you know you've got this longer term trend all the way down to sort of that 16 17p and as we fall i would just continue to buy in really for, for this one what code will do for anyone that potentially hasn't watched um any previous videos they're a, a lithium company hence the video but they also have mines in or they have mines in Mali and a, and a few other places as well you can find the reports on on their websites about what they're doing you know potential estimations of what their mines are worth uh, and how they intend to, to to use those mines but the next one that I wanted to look at was Bacanora now I've done a post on Bacanora uh, just just now um, about 10 or 15 minutes ago it looks really good and um, one of the other companies that I've looked at and this is this is this is what I'm you know the lithium sort of industry is, is a very uh, what's the word it's a very you've got some seriously big players that will always have their fingers in other lithium companies so Bacanora's main shareholder is Gang Feng uh, Gang Feng is essentially the biggest uh, we just go back to that is the biggest second biggest um, lithium provider so you've got Gang Feng, which has a percentage of Bacanora, but Bacanora also has a percentage of Zimwald. And what you'll find is these companies get smaller and smaller. So Gang Feng's got a market cap of $326 million. Um, Bacanora's is around £200 million, and Zimwald's is about £65 million. And then you've got Codal at about £40 million. And that's what you'll find with these companies is if... if Bacanora, or what you'll find about lithium anyways, is of what I've, I've seemed to have, have, have learned, is that if a lithium company goes for a mine and they're first, the chances of another company stepping in and trying to get that before them seems unlikely. So what you'll find is the bigger companies will come in and buy a share of that business if they have potentially um, some on their hands, which is worth doing. And I think the fact that Gangfeng, which is the second largest lithium provider, has you know a bulk share in this company does say something and um, so looking at the chart we're at 66 uh, pence or 67 pence at the moment we're up 19 percent today 
I think that we could go a lot higher in this. Now, again, it's a penny stock. They move. It could be down 10% tomorrow, then 10% the next day, and then shoot up 60% the following day. It, they do that. What I find with 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 Bacanora, what I've seen in the past is you get this, you know, this very quiet, uh, these quiet periods, so sort of February to March or February to April, May to, to August, and you have these this one occasional day where you get this massive rally, and that coincidentally has been today. Um, there is a trend there that you could you could put in. But again, when it comes to penny stocks, realistically, they, these don't matter. You you're trading on hype, similar to how you get these short squeezes and. And stuff like that on on your AMC and your GameStop. So what I'd be looking for for um, Bacanora is towards that hundred p level at one pound, hundred pence. The reason being is because you've got that initial couple of tries up here in the past, and um, essentially we have broken that this consolidation that we've been in for quite a while. So hundred hundred p is essentially the target. A break above hundred p could take us towards that 160, 150 level, and there's nothing wrong to say that we could get that. We could definitely, definitely get there. Um, you know, I've I've looked into what they do. It's best if you give the article a read. I have put a link to that article in the description. Um, but just to give a quick, uh, brief overview, they essentially have a mine uh, in Sonora, which is a, a state in Mexico. There's, um, I think I worked out that in the mineral reserves, there is uh, 4,500 potential tons of lithium carbonate extract, which is LCE there, and 3,480 lithium particles per million, which is pretty good. But four and a half thousand tons at the moment, it's like 100 grand a ton. I'll let you guys do the maths on that one. And um, you know, but this is you've got probable, proven, and the reason that probably. Um, uh, gang Feng have come in and bought this is because the probable is probably very right. Um, but given this, you know, if you're buying in at 67p, you know, it's pennies as, as such for these shares. If it falls to like 40p a share and you're down 30, 40 percent, it is what it is. You've got to accept that. But it doesn't mean that selling it, you know, if you're going to buy these shares, you might as well just let them go to zero because the chances are, you know, if you're willing to lose 100 quid to potentially make 300 pounds. Uh, I'm sure anybody would tell you that the odds are probably pretty good in doing that. Um, and again, that would be probably the case in a, in a stock like this. If we just quickly look at using the measure tool, it's current price. If we get up to there, it's a 135% return. It's not, not quite 300 quid, but, but it's still a very good return on investment. You're never going to get that on Apple or Amazon in the next 12, 18 or 24 months. Maybe over the space of two to three, maybe four or five years, would you get that on those? But the hope is that this does this pretty quick. Um, like I said, there's a full little article on there and I have also um, put a, a link as well within this article to the Sonoran lithium mine, all the information about it, as well as the numbers. Numbers aren't great. The numbers are terrible if you look at the numbers. In fact, generally for what I do, if you looked at the financials for Bacanora, they're terrible, they're absolutely awful. But you know, I'm not looking at that, I'm looking at the charts because it's all about volume, it's all about investors picking this up and pushing the price up. I think that after today, with a 19% rise, that tells us that we are ready to go a lot higher. Now, just quickly looking at some of the bigger companies as well. So I wanted to look at um, Able Now, which is, is essentially the big, the big player in, in the lithium game. We've got this constant rise. We're not overbought on the, um, well, we're not over 70 on the RSI, so we're not overbought. Uh, if we look at the weekly, yeah, we're overbought, but I, I think that again, we're just going to go higher. And one of the reasons being is as well is if you look at the price of lithium, uh, lithium at the moment is around a hundred thousand pounds a ton, I think. Uh, I've che checking that on Trading Economics, um, it was about a hundred grand a ton uh, last time I checked. And obviously, this is going to benefit these companies. Um, so again, it's pretty good. Um, Gang Feng, which is the major one that's got its fingers in, in most of these ones as well, these smaller ones. You know, this is looking pretty good. We've had this um, in the last couple of weeks, we've gone from sort of that one, 180 to sort of that 140, now start at 150. There's a very good possibility that by the end of the year, we could be up at 200, which is a nice increase as well. So for this one, we would be aiming for 200 um, if you was buying in now. In terms of support, you want to be looking at somewhere probably in around a 125 level around there 
okay and um, you've also got um, another Nix another Nix is an interesting one um, you know it, it's it's it hasn't been public for too well. It's, it's it hasn't been public too long, but you know I there I've seen or heard rumours that they're working with Tesla, and they've got certain sort of um, or they're on to something in terms of lithium storage. Now, if if, if they are, then there's potentially a lot of potent, you know a lot of percentage increase in this one, should we say? Um, but again, you've got to do the research on it because it's rumors so these are dollars so it's an aussie company so these are four dollars 36 australian dollars initial target for here would be six and um, we have broken out to all-time highs it would see or would see fit to see this go higher um, and again the, one of the reasons that i'm a, a buyer on all of these is just simply the fact that you've got demand for cars and demand for um lithium as a result of that and lithium has obviously gone up almost 100 percent in price um in the last 12 months now if i was going to structure a portfolio this is what i would probably want to be doing so let's just say you've got a thousand uh, pounds to put in so the etf is 85 quid and what i'd be doing is i'd be buying some of the etf simply on the fact that uh, the etf is 85 a share or 85 dollars a share um which Second, uh, eighty-five. Uh, so that's sixty-one pounds essentially a share. So it's sixty-one quid. So I probably put half of it in there. Probably go to look to buy nine of the shares in um, the ETF just because it's the safest thing to do. So sixty-one times nine. So you're looking at maybe five hundred and fifty pounds as such in there that leaves you with 450 pounds now looking at some of the companies that we was looking at as well if we just have a quick look um i would go with kodo bacanora um no point in going with zin wards because zin ward is essentially part of bacanora but again if we look at zin ward this is looking pretty good as well there is no reason for this to probably be going down we're probably going to continue higher if i had bacanora potentially putting maybe 200 pounds in this one. So we just pop back to there. So I'd probably do 200 pounds into Bacanora. Okay, and then that leaves you with 250 pounds. I would probably put 150 pound in Codal now and 100 pound if Codal falls further um, or prepare. To, to put money in and then it's one of them with most things you know you want to add it add, add to it as it as it's growing that's just the best thing to do trying to trade these stocks is terrible don't do it but these are the companies that i'm looking at i'll be following them on on, on mini pit back in orange the first one that i've posted i'll be posting about Kodo, probably about the lithium etf as well so as they move up and down in price i'll be uh, watching them anyways as well uh, if you liked this video, please like and subscribe. It helps the channel. Please follow us on Instagram. I post a lot of stuff on there. Um, and as well, we have a WhatsApp. And the website is free to use for anybody that you know wants to have a look. We've looked at Walt Disney and we've had, had a look at some of the Indian markets as well. Uh, thanks for watching.